look, a builder in the middle of nowhere. There's also a shaped cart. Weird. I do have some stone and a flux point. What does it do? I think it is very obvious what it's going to do. It's going to make our new island. You might also notice that this island is almost 500 blocks away from home. It's a long distance. This is going to be the site of our industrial island and I thought maybe we can use Crate's train in order to go back and forth. It takes ages to make one of these spheres. I think each one takes like 20 minutes. I was thinking to myself, the islands that we're making are very grey. Maybe we should add more grey. No, don't worry, it's not gonna be grey. The previous islands that we made, I haven't worked on them, so they're very barren. Um, I think that's the word. We should work here first, before installing some machines. So we do have a small pathway. You're either in the way, or you're pushing me. Just to spice things up around our base, for this area we're going to use the stone path blocks from Blood Magic. And we can also give it a teeny tiny bit of variation. I also did that with the path, uh, it's very difficult to notice. Our first project for today is to get some hydrogen chloride, which comes from chlorine, which comes from Brian, the fluid. So we are going to need a few thermal evaporation towers. We should have enough steel, not enough copper. I also have a feeling that one day we're going to make the mecha suit. It's just a feeling. We never do that. Therefore, it's going to be wise to set up lithium as well. And well, we also have to do it within one chunk. As I have already mentioned, this is 500 blocks away from home and therefore everything has to be chunk loaded. Okay, first off, I keep forgetting how expensive thermal evaporation towers are. You need so many blocks. I'm always like 200 is going to be more than enough and then I end up using one quadrillion. Another thing that you might notice is that even though we are almost 750 blocks away from home, we're still in a stupid desert. But for thermal evaporation towers, that's actually good. It's going to increase the efficiency. Apparently, it's hot. And talking about hot stuff, let us get a few items. Oh, we're out of everything. Let us put an ender chest for our machines. And I believe some of you are going to need upgrades. Yeah, these are elite. We have plenty of circuits. We have plenty of alloys. Nice. Oh, but we don't have the other alloy. <laughs> okay, let me craft a few stuff. I have been doing some crafting and then I noticed I knocked out like 40 quests. Which is very weird because why would you have all tiers of every single pipe as a quest? Because you know, you can even get a universal cable on day one. And by day one, I mean literally like in the first hour. That's not very important. Let us get back to business. As you guys already know, thermal evaporation towers can be 18 blocks tall. They don't look 18 blocks tall because most of it is underground. I wanted to be able to hide the piping. Since we are in a desert, even if you're not in a desert, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but in the desert, you might be able to notice it. If we give it water, it should already make us Brian. Yeah, you see, it's even at a decent rate. But do not be confused. This is Brian the fluid, not the person. Brian the person is going to be cooked up in another way. One method of speeding it up is to use solar panels, like so, which I am going to do that for all the distillation towers anyways, but there is another method, just in case you have a decent supply of power and you don't know what to do. Actually, that's not a very good way of doing that. And the method that I was talking about is a resistive heater. And yes, apparently I'm positively charged, so I charged it up when it was in my inventory. But I know that not everybody is positively charged, so what you can do is that you can use a flux point to give it power. How do we move it? A thermodynamic conductor. Do we have to extract? I don't know, I never paid attention, because you can see the heat. The heat that it's producing at this very moment is very negligible, we're going to give it, I don't know, 1000 RF per tick. It really doesn't matter because we don't need any of them in very large quantities. Wait a minute, you don't work? Yes, you don't have water. I think even 1000 RF per tick is an overkill. Who cares? We have enough power. So over here, with these two thermal evaporation towers, what we're going to do is that we need to take out the Brian, the fluid, and put it inside another thermal evaporation tower. That gives us lithium. The other two thermal evaporation towers are going to output into an electrolytic separator. And voila, chlorine. After not to complicate it too because of the lag, we are never ever going to run a sodium cooled reactor. So we dump it. I did manage to get a few more machines, so let's finish this thing. First things first, uh, we need to have another electrolytic separator. Obviously, that is going to be for water. We don't want oxygen, so we're going to dump it. We want the hydrogen. If we come to gases, we want the output to be in the front. So now what we should be able to do is that we should be able to have a chemical infuser. You get hydrogen, and from the top you're going to get chlorine. And that should be hydrogen chloride. So how many machines do we have? Three. I don't really think we need to have entangled blocks. We can just do something like this. That's a pressurized tube. 
universal cable. Yeah, the cables are not going to be visible. Also, if you're wondering why the hell don't we have any mobs down here, there is a magnum torch. So what can we mute? You? Resistive heater has a sound. Never noticed. So hydrogen chloride was something that we needed, we already have it, I have to upgrade the machines, but let us also get lithium. So just remember, Brian goes into this thermal evaporation tower and we get lithium. That lithium has to be converted into a gas. I never learned how to place down a rotary condensator. Yes, finally. So we extract the lithium into the rotary condensator, we toggle, and yes, we're getting lithium the gas. One more pressurized tube, one crystallizer, and that's it basically. It's gonna give us lithium dust. We just need to have an ender chest over here. Auto eject on. Yep, we have everything we need, and look at the crazy amount of mobs. Oh my goodness. There was lightning. Did you do that? Or maybe there is an apotheosis boss and somebody useful? No, I think it was the blitz. Yeah, I can never sleep here. Uh, we go home. Okay, it has been a while later and I'm trying to clean up as we go along. Uh, it's not fully complete, obviously, but it's much more clean. And when I want to finish it, it's not going to take that much time. You know, unlike the other island. But I have now fully upgraded the machines and we do have hydrogen chloride at a relatively fast rate. Actually, that's very decent. However, we got the hydrogen chloride, but I never explained why do we need it. And in the meantime that we are flying, I can explain to you what is wrong with power. You have to be within 64 blocks of the reactor for it to render. If I go back, it's gone. It's a shame, these are beautiful blocks. Anyways, let us move on. The reason that we need hydrogen chloride is the old mod star. If we want to make the philosopher fuel, you might notice that we are going to need uranium blocks five times compressed. That is a lot of uranium and, well, we don't really have that much uranium. Half a million. And again, it might be a very stupid dream, but I want to get an old mod star block. So whatever the hell this stupid number is, we need nine times this number. So the reason that we wanted hydrogen chloride is to do the ore processing from mechanism. Obviously, we're also going to need sulfuric acid. Three pieces of raw uranium are going to give us two buckets of dirty uranium slurry. That means we are going to get 10 uranium crystals from the three raw ores that we provided the system. And I think seven times the output is actually a very good yield. And I just remembered we should not have dumped the oxygen. We need it for ore tripling. Eh, uh, where is oxygen? Dumping excess? And just to make sure that we're going to have a buffer, maybe we should have a pressurized tube, maybe even two. Since I have already mentioned, we're also going to need sulfuric acid. So here is a chemical injection chamber. I don't know, we put you over here, an entangled block, and you, my dearest friend, shall be entangled. Yeah, you have hydrogen chloride, perfect. I am going to use an energy condenser and we're going to start duping gunpowder. Because sulfur does not have EMC, but gunpowder does. That stupid gunpowder goes inside the chemical injection chamber and we should be able to get sulfur. Yeah? Oh, we should extract it. Yes. Do not be worried, we also have plenty of upgrades which we are going to apply. Very good, we are getting sulfur. Also, I do believe that this guy accepts gas upgrades, so that it doesn't consume that much hydrogen chloride. Another thing that some of you guys might be wondering is that, Lush, you are getting sulfur from sieving and you have millions. That is very true. But you can't really make sulfuric acid with the sulfur, you need the sulfur dust. For sulfur dioxide, that's the only way. Unfortunately, the only way of converting this guy into a dust is through a pulverizer, and pulverizers are incredibly slow. So hence we are using mechanism. Once upgraded, this should be amazing. The end goal is the ore processing, so we need to start making sulfuric acid. I have made a few machines, and we are going to have three sets of each. Because in addition to ore processing, I need sulfuric acid in order to make fissile fuel. However, since we have to do everything within one chunk, I prefer to do ore processing as well as sulfuric acid within one chunk. So, how many machines do we need? So, chemical dissolution chamber, chemical washer, crystallizer, chemical injection chamber, purification chamber, crusher, enrichment. That's a total of 8 machines. Uh, that's quite a bit. So, you see, planning is important. We are actually going to use the exact same setup that we used in Not Too Complicated 2. Yes, I want you to face this way. Yes, as I was saying, we are going to have the exact same setup that we had in Not Too Complicated 2 because I think that looked cool. Oh, there is a problem. Yeah, if we want to make a structure for it, we have to move it here. It's not going to be a super massive structure, but you know. So I'm lazy to fly back home to get my configuration card. We're going to craft one more. And I just remembered... Yeah, I had it in my ender chest. Never mind, I do stupid things. 
Over at our purification chamber, I do have an ender chest for sulfur, which means we're going to insert it into our chemical oxidizers. And since I don't really have that many sides, yes, entangled blocks. So if we clear every single side, input from the bottom, where's the sulfur? Yes, extract, not insert. Chemical oxidizer, shut up. For some very weird reason, it's not connecting and you have to update the machine. I don't really know why, but we want you to output the gas from the back. That's not your back. Yes, it's on the right. So we should be able to copy your setting, paste it, and again, update the piping. And if you're wondering why the hell was I running out of sides, it's because I want to use the bottom for power. Not here. So sulfur in a chemical oxidizer is going to give us sulfur dioxide without oxygen somehow. That goes inside a chemical infuser from the back, and the first chemical infuser is going to need oxygen. So I did make a few quantum entangler porters. You can go over here. You shall be known as oxygen. Oh, this has a giant capacity for oxygen. Also, we are not generating any more oxygen because hydrogen is full. So dumping excess. Yup. You know, I think at this point in the game, it's obvious that I'm going to use a lot of entangled block, basically at a one to one ratio with all of my machines. Oh, we should sleep. Uh, definitely. So we do have a pressurized tube, you're getting oxygen and that's sulfur trioxide. So for the sulfuric acid itself, we're going to need water vapor and therefore we're going to have a sink with rotary condensators. But can someone explain this to me? If you vaporize water, what are you going to get except steam? Water plasma? I don't know. All I'm saying is that why don't they call it steam? Well, we do have sulfuric acid the gas, but I think every single machine is going to need an upgrade. So see you in a bit. So I have my machines. They are all fully upgraded. Where's my sulfur? Am I not producing enough sulfur? I thought this should be... Yeah, that is enough. Oh, I know why. You're stupid. Because, you know, it's losing one sulfur every second and the logistical sorter is just putting one sulfur inside this guy. We need to have more connections. And yes, that was the problem. We should be getting a ton of sulfuric acid. That is good. And I'm really not gonna stay here. We go back home. Yeah, you see the problem with ore dictionaries. I have 3 million sulfur and I shouldn't have done that. But I had to. Now we need to start making the machines that we need for ore processing. Chemical dissolution chamber. Let's somehow do this in a row so that I don't forget. Chemical washer. Crystallizer. Purification chamber, which is one of the blocks that I really hate to craft. Actually, it's a chemical injection chamber, which does require a purification chamber, which does require an enrichment chamber. This is why I hate it. Then it's the purification chamber. The crusher. Injection chamber. And just to finish everything off with mechanism, a smelter. Really? Now? And I should definitely charge my ring because I don't think we're going to survive that many trips. Also, you're two blocks away from the path. So the next row of machines should come here. Actually, they should come here. Uh, the good thing about these machines is that I believe if you just put them from left to right, they should automatically output. It also could have been the other way. I'm not sure. Nice. Eight blocks and eight blocks. So we're going to need a few more entangled blocks. This one is sulfuric acid. Therefore, we're going to entangle it over here and output from the tank. Like so. Yes, it has sulfuric acid. I'm just doing this because I'm lazy to do piping and make another sink. So we're going to have another entangled block for the chemical washer. That means you're getting water. Good. Crystallizer doesn't need anything. Injection chamber needs uh, hydrogen chloride. So you come with me. And this is why we have two tubes. Here is hydrogen chloride. Purification chamber was with oxygen. So actually something like this should work. Yeah, I think everything should work. So if I give you uranium and auto eject, yes. Very good. Everything is working fine. Auto eject, auto eject. And is everything working? Obviously they are going to need a ton of upgrades, but yeah, everything works. The chemical crystallizer is the bottleneck. It's so slow. I think we have also heard every single noise from mechanism so we can shut up everything. This is a very common problem that you always have with mechanism and I think we are going to have a solution for it. The chemical dissolution chamber is going to take three ores and it's going to give us two buckets, right? The chemical washer has a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning that as soon as it's going to get dirty uranium slurry, it's going to wash it. The crystallizer, however, is going to make one crystal every time that it gets two buckets. From here onwards, we should be able to use tier upgrades, so it's going to be incredibly fast, but this guy is the bottleneck. I might have a very weird solution, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let us try this. So if we entangle the chemical washer to these guys, oh, we're out of uranium. I was wondering why the hell aren't we getting anything? Uh, we're out. Wait until it's full. Oh, it doesn't work through entangled blocks. Huh. 
Oh, that's a bummer. What if we don't use entangled blocks and use the old-fashioned way? You know, of doing some pipes. You also export to the back. No. Ah, oh, export the slurry to the back. <laughs> yep. That was the problem. So yes, it does go inside the extra crystallizers and we can have four of them. And we should be able to logistically transport them into the injecting factory. Finally, there is no backlog. Oh, and by the way, you should accept stuff from the back. Yes. It's actually funny, now nothing goes inside this guy. <laughs> That's weird. And do you know why? It's filling up the tube. I think that takes priority or something. It's fine, who cares? It's gonna work. I did connect the chemical dissolution chamber to our ore processing area, so it's getting uranium automatically. And we also have a crafter, which is making us the blocks. And so far we have three times compressed. Only one block. We're doing garbage. But then I was thinking to myself, why does it have to be three raw ores? Why not one? Why not four? Why not ten? Cause three is not a very minecrafty number, it should be eight, sixteen, or something. Well, it's because we can also use the raw blocks. And I think that's much more efficient. Because you see, it's constantly full. With the raw ore itself, sometimes it's empty. Another question would be, are we losing uranium or are we gaining uranium? Seems we're gaining. So let us go home and fix the block issue. I have been editing the footage and I noticed if we go on like this, I have never managed to finish the things that I wanted to finish within this episode. So I went up ahead and added a few more machines. What does it do? HDPE. Oops. I did pick up a bit. It's fine. And the reason that this is incredibly compact, because, you know, it's like only four machines, is because we are already producing everything that we need in order to make HTP. For example, hydrogen and oxygen come from down here. You see, oxygen, hydrogen. And if I remember correctly, water comes from there. Also, it doesn't really have to be automatic. I'm giving it melons, but uh, we don't need to consistently feed it with melons, because we don't need that much HTP. I think the only uses for HTP sheets is to make the upgrades for the mecha suit, the mecha suit itself, obviously, the SPS chamber, which you don't need that much, and obviously, the solar neutron activator. Also, I think if we give it more melons, we should have enough HTP until the end of the pack. So what is the important thing that I wanted to do today? Well, missile fuel. You might notice that this has been on my hotbar for the past like 5 episodes, but don't you worry, we're going to remove it today. Oh, and by the way, just in case you're curious, we're up to two uranium blocks, three times compressed. Oh no, three of them. It doesn't stack all the time. Maybe we put you here and you here. It's going to be messed up eventually. It's fine. One very important change that they have made in 1.18 is that, if you guys remember, the second PRC, which is making us HTPE, used to have made extra oxygen. You don't get it anymore. I mean, it wasn't really a huge deal, you could just put a tank and void the excess, but it's good that we're not getting it. Anywho, I did extend the path and this is the site of our reactor, so we should make fissile fuel maybe here? So that we're going to load only two chunks. We're not gonna set up the reactor today, obviously. Just the fissile fuel will do. So let us get the machines that we need, we are going to need a chemical infuser, more tanks, a chemical dissolution chamber, again more tanks, chemical oxidizer, I don't have lead, Weird. Actually, it's not weird. Uh, it was crafting me solar panels. So I'm guessing it consumed the lead. I turned it off. It should be fine. I will deal with the solar panel later for the moment. Isotopic centrifuge. That's it. For some reason, I think I have an extra machine. Chemical oxidizer is going to give us uranium oxide. Oh, I'm actually missing a machine. We need yellow cake. So enrichment chamber, I guess. So how do we want to do this? We're going to have the enrichment chamber. Chemical oxidizer. The chemical dissolution chamber, which is going to make us hydrofluoric acid. All of them should go inside a chemical infuser, which we can put it here, I guess. And that goes inside the centrifuge. Yeah, something like this should work. I'm not really sure how we're going to set this up completely, but here is some power. The centrifuge, I think, consumes like 300,000 RF per tick. So that's always nice. And now we need to take care of uranium. For that, we're going to use our Aldamodium furnace. Because why the hell not? It's incredibly fast. So, you accept from the left? Yeah, <laughs> very fast. I have been checking, even though we're crafting blocks of uranium, our supply of uranium is not dropping, so our production is good. Anyways, here is our enrichment chamber. Does it go in? Uh-oh. It seems I have messed up the piping, something else went in? Why? But yeah, this is yellow cake, that is uranium oxide, and we get it in the chemical infuser. Now we need to make the hydrofluoric acid. We are already making sulfuric acid, so this is going to be easy peasy. You should be getting sulfuric acid, yes. Ah, this is the problem. 
okay. Yeah, but these furnaces are very stupid. Uh, whenever the output is full, it's not gonna output ever again. It's fine, we use a pipe. So now the question is, where is my fluorite? Ah, here. We just export you and we should be good. Yes, yes, we're getting hydrofluoric acid. We just connect you and that should be fissile fuel. No? Why no? Ah, from this side, yes. I thought we were done with muting, but hopefully this is the last one. Actually, the reactor is the last one. But yeah, fissile fuel. Also, do not be worried, we are not rushing through the pack. We just want to get some polonium so that I can make the mecha suit and then go to the other dimension and kill a piglin king or something. But I think with that, ladies and gentlemen, it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye. And maybe we should also have a tank here. Oh, it's 200,000 RF per tick. <laughs> okay, see you next episode.